What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Maverick Performance Golf. We are back with our Quick Nine series and we are welcoming in to the bays here at 1611 the Texas country singer, songwriter, and good, good buddy, Mr. Steve Helms. What's up y'all? How you doing buddy? I'm good man. Oh, you even do that left-handed. Come well, on man. A club in my You're hand, fine. Dude. You can put Come it down. <laughs> Um, so obviously you kind of know what we're doing. We've already had our other good buddy, Justin Frizzell in here. Uh, what was his score? So he shot on this exact same nine holes plus six. Okay. Or right. Six over. So that is the current leader in the clubhouse. I got it. I got it. Um, but be in honor of him, we've named the whole thing the TXRDR challenge. Oh, of course so, we did. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we're playing the Troubadour Golf Club out in Tennessee. Nice. Uh, he picked it. So I really I felt think like it, I was in the Alito area, but. Well, that awesome. too. <laughs> yeah. This is very cool. Let's play golf. Can we like talk and make jokes too in between? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Well, that's the Not fun about stuff. about my golf swing. I saw a post yesterday that got, I, while I was tagging this, I have no idea, but it said something about a bear chasing somebody and somebody oh. said, Frizzell, you picked Helms, didn't you? He was yeah, it was Stefan. <laughs> he, Stefan, who is the owner of Wishbone and Flynn, a great little restaurant here who in Who I spend Worth. a lot of money with. <laughs> Probably more than you should. <laughs> and I get tagged in that post as the idiot. Stay there. You are in the almost exact same position Justin was in. <laughs> well, let's see the skill set getting out of here though. Right. So just out of curious, but I know you and I have talked a whole lot. We've bullshitted and played a ton of golf together, but uh, yes. where, where did you get started with golf? Like, how did you get you into know, the game? I didn't play young, like, you know, high school stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, I was out of high school whenever I started playing. My brother-in-law, Jackie Briscoe in Cleburne, okay. whenever I graduated, uh, I don't know, I was probably 19, 18 or 19 or so, and he would go play, and I was like, dude, what are you doing? Right. This looks stupid, you know. He said, like, come go with me. And so one day I did. Holy shit, man! Can we go back and get you? Know, yeah, and I was hooked after that. Cool. And yeah. how long ago was that? Oh God, dude, I'm 54. I was 18 when I started playing. 18 or 19. We're not we're not mathematicians here. We are <laughs> golf musicians. pros and musicians. It was a long ass time ago. <laughs> but that's that's how I got started with my brother-in-law Jackie. Cool. Yeah. And uh, then my dad started playing because he didn't play either until uh -huh. I got into it. And he was like, "Well, yeah, I'll try it." And then he was the same way. Hell, let's go play, you know. Right. We, yeah. So then it just became so a this thing. One, it's this one guy's fault that we can all go, mother. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. It's his fault. All right. 136 out. 136 out. Uh, remember, you got your percentages down here on the right. So you're only going to get about 90% power out of that, 92. Okay. So if all you're right. playing at 136, you really want to at least play at about 145. Okay. All right. Swing hard. Host and caddy. You're sounding a lighting guy, too, aren't you? I am everything right now for this. <laughs> Running the vacuum cleaner? Yeah, that was earlier. Oop, got it thin. Is it going to work? Bunker to bunker. Come on. Yeah. Vacuum guy, IT, social media guy, instructor, you name it. I really don't feel like I hit that very well. No, you didn't. You thinned it a little bit. Be good. That's it. Not bad. Nope. So, same as Justin, we do have in all of these quick night interviews, we do have auto putts turned on, gimmies okay. instead of 12 feet. So you're not going to putt. Okay. That's mainly for our speed. Right. Um, you do have to be on the green. Oh, oh well, yeah. <laughs> right there on the fringe. So, but yeah, anything inside of 12 feet is an auto putt. one putt. Outside of that, it's going to use the uh, PGA Tour averages. Okay. All right. You just chip or close. Yep. That checked up on your right on that edge. It was but down here. I kind of thought it would go. You're going to two putt that 28 feet. Or 17 feet for the pins. So yeah, still probably two putt. Good God, dude. I double bogeyed the first hole. Yeah. The only difference was he, uh, I think he parted. I hate that guy. <laughs> Wait, are these mics on? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're a musician. You, They're Justin. always live, man. I love you, Justin. <laughs> You're my friend. Turn over now. Keep coming. Good swing there, buddy. Thank you, man. Just missed off to the left in that little collection area. So it's on the surface though, isn't it? Right. 
So a little bit ago, you actually mentioned your dad getting into the game a little bit. And so um, I don't know that a whole lot of people really know kind of your history with getting into music, which obviously I, you know, again, we've played enough golf together and hung out enough that I kind of know. Yeah, of course. Um, but I think I'd love to, you know, get your take on how you got in and your dad and everything and how you got right. pulled into music. My dad was Leon Helms. Had a record deal in the 70s. Put the, some 45 records out, you know. Right. Uh, never did an album. I never saw an album by him because you know because I was so young, you sure. know, five and six years old, and uh, but he had a forty-five out. So he was in the music business. Uh, Mom and dad were divorced. He had an opportunity to go do his thing and probably be pretty big. I mm -hmm. mean, yeah, I remember you know reading clippings and stuff from articles and things later in life. But that was a pretty big deal back in the day. Sure. And uh, he chose to not do that stay close to the house, just, you know, be around the kids, which is right. awesome, you know. Yeah, absolutely. He had a Helms Electric in Cleburne my whole life, but he always played and sang. Right. So growing up, I uh, was always around uncles and cousins and all this, you know, everybody right. played music, you know. So it was like, that's what I did. I mean, shit, when I was five years old, I was sitting in a VFW with my aunt watching my dad play. You right. know, just, just, just grew up around it, you know. Sure. So well, I, I got into it because of my dad. Right. And, you know, it was the Helmses and the Burgesses in Cleveland. So sure. Sonny Burgess, all that group, you know. So Sonny was on the Burgess side, I was on the Helmses, but we both share the same aunt and uncle. Right. So when Sonny was 18, he played guitar for my dad. That's cool. Then he went on to do his own thing. I went and played guitar for Sonny. You right. Know? Played piano, played played bass. I, right. You know, shit, I did everything for Sonny in a 12-year span, you know. Sure. It's just like whoever didn't show up, that was the instrument I played that <laughs> night, you know. Steve-O, get over there. Yeah, you know, it was kind of that way. Luckily, I never had to play drums. That would have sucked, but... <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I'd have done it. Yeah, right. I'd have got through it. That's kind of how I got into it. It was just because, you know, again, because of my dad. Very cool. Even though I was too stupid to do anything else, so I'm stuck in it. Actually, actually, I'm a German electrician. I just don't tell people that because I don't want to <laughs> hang ceiling fans when I'm not on the road. <laughs> hey, man, I got a plug that's out, you know. Yeah. You do Stick a fork in it. It'll work. Yeah. <laughs> Lick it first. Pretty good. Well, from there, but not bad. Yeah, is that a par? Is that a par? That should be a par. You're inside a. That's par. Yeah. Take that, Justin Brazil. I say that. <laughs> yep. There you go. <laughs> You're running the game, dude. Make I'm it not a par. really. I set it up. I make it a par. <laughs> well, it doesn't show you the actual number till the shot's been I completed and you. it goes through. So I hear you. Well, you got your first little dog leg left here with a little par five. Well, that ought to go good with my left-handed hook. <laughs> left-handed hook. Yeah. Otherwise, it was a cut for all the normal golfers. Yeah, out there. for all you normal people. <laughs> all right. Five hundred and four yards. Nice so and short. Be a good driver sandwich here. Right there. Fairway? Fairway. Turn just a little. Ah, great shot. Thanks, man. There's the swing we worked hard on. There's the swing. <laughs> so which course was it that you started playing down in Cleburne? What was the... Well, back back then there was two courses. There was the uh, the city course, mm -hmm. you know, the public, and they also had a, a country club as well. Gotcha. Then when the uh, oil and gas business started hitting the shale, Barnett Barnett right. shale, well, the old country club got gas wells on top of it. They <laughs> shut it down. So now you know they just have the Cleburne Golf Links now. Right. And where that one is, that was where the old. Uh, Cleburne course was. Gotcha. Right they just kind of revamped it. And they revamped it up. It. Right. Which is an awesome years, little golf however, course. Yeah. yeah. However long ago that was. And I live a solid hour 40 away from there and there's at least a couple times a year we'll kind of make the pilgrimage down there and go play it every once right. in a while. A little less now that our buddy Kerbal's not down there. Yeah, I mean, and you know, he's killing it right now in the, he is. In the housing and real estate business, but I, I miss Kyle on the golf course. Dude. <laughs> and apparently salsa too now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, selling salsa. Have you tried that yet? Yeah, there's four or five of yeah. jars of it in my fridge. Yeah. In fact, I saw in the trash can the other night, I got home from a gig and there was an empty one and some steps been eating no. it. No! No! <laughs> All right, 62 yards to the pin. Let's 
little chip up here. Be the stick, sit right there. Sit. Stop. Stop. Oh, no Stop. spin on that, Stop. was it? Yeah, you caught it a little thin. Ah. Uh, I feel like that was a good swing, dude. <laughs> so if you had to pick your favorite golf course, and I'm gonna limit this just to the Metroplex. <laughs> the one that you like to play the most. You you are limited in to the Yeah, just somewhere around here. A course that we play on a somewhat regular basis, I would say. Or well, have had the opportunity to play in the last, uh, what have right. we known each other, about 10 years now? Uh, what just stands out in your mind is, I, like, I enjoy that golf course. Good, bad, and different. I always loved going to Trophy Club. Okay. Yeah, I, I always loved playing that, either course, because sure. there's two courses. Mm -hmm. And then what's the one that you used to run that we'd always play on Mondays? Uh, Ridgely South. Ridgely. Mm -hmm. uh, Ridgely was always fun course. Yes. Because it, it was just old, so those trees had been there right. forever. You know what I mean? Just, yep. You just feel like you've gone back in time. Sure. I flew that 37 yards by, dude. Yes. Well, Come you, on. You ran it 37 yards well, by. yeah, it rolled. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, low grooved that bad boy. Right there on the stick, too, dude. Called I that thought the, I had uh, a good the, shot. You foreheaded the ball. You just took it right across the top of the Yeah. I really thought I had a good chance for a birdie right there. Run out a little bit. Keep going. Now it's going to check up going downhill. Is that what you're telling me right now? What? Come on. <laughs> Plus three on the fourth. So you're playing bogey golf. So you just got to get a few underneath there. So you're probably, and I'm going to let you finish the sentence, you're probably best known in the music industry for what? <laughs> <laughs> being an old bastard. <laughs> okay, not that. I actually meant music made, not for necessarily. being one of those guys when somebody goes, oh yeah, we just did this. And I go, yeah, I did that 20 years ago. What a good job. <laughs> no, but you've been around obviously for quite some time with yeah, your own band. Yeah which is the very creative name of the Steve Helms band. Yeah, oh yeah, I put a lot of thought into that. <laughs> yeah, Texas country guys, not the most creative when it comes to band names. Yeah. Some are, it's not really. Well, you just try to make it simple to find. You yeah, know. that's true. No, but, but you're uh, obviously well, most well known for the song Nowhere But Texas. Yeah, Nowhere But Texas. Uh, wrote that, golly, in 07 maybe, mm -hmm. with Kyle Level and David Banning. And guy still being played, you know. Constantly. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> the Rangers have played it at every home game for the past 13 seasons. This would have been 14. Right. And I don't know. They still may be playing it, but there's so, just nobody there to hear it. Right I know now. they played it because I was watching the game a couple days ago right. before they went on their road trip they're on right was now. It, did you hear it on the air? And yeah, so I we're, we're both. I think we're both friends with Chuck Morgan on Facebook yeah, yeah. and that kind of stuff. And so he always posts, you know. Oh, did he say something guys. about playing it? So he said something about it. At the same time, I was just sitting on Facebook doing a post for Maverick Performance Golf. And I had the game on kind of in my office, which is just off the corner, so I don't really can't see it necessarily, but I can hear it. Right. And all of a sudden there's da -na 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 -na, and I just hear the beginning <laughs> of the song, I'm like, yeah. Unfortunately though, that's background music of the broadcast, so <laughs> it wasn't on the broadcast, so I don't right. get paid for that. <laughs> Stop talking announcers. <laughs> yeah. All right, what's the odds of me hitting a fairway right here? If you're gonna go nice and slow on your back, I'm gonna say pretty high. Okay. Mainly because it moves the way you want it to move. Right. There we go. Stay right there. That works. Right down the pipe, man. Thanks, buddy. So you have 205. Let's see what it is. Over a creek? Carry. Yep, looks like it's 165 to carry the creek. All right. So this is one of those ones that if you're gonna miss it, you'd rather miss it a little long. Or so let's, uh, let's five iron that. So you have, in my opinion, of the people we all know, all of our buddies, I think you have one of the most fun music videos. Right. Even though I'm not in it. <laughs> <laughs> I watched some of it get shot. Right. Um, and I threw things at people that were in it. Uh, but uh, when you re-record, or not re-record, you... I did. I mean, yeah, you did an it. acoustic version of Nowhere But Texas for the anniversary of it, right? Right. Which was the how many year anniversary? It's 10 year anniversary. 10 year anniversary. So this was four years ago now? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Because it was at... You did some of the three, shooting three at, years, three years, at Bowen Music Fest when right. it was still at the Brazos. Right. And it hadn't been there and well, this would have been the third year they had had right. it, yeah. the new spot. Yeah. Um, but that was probably, I mean, disregard the fact that you got everybody from the current manager of the Rangers at the time, which was Bannister. Yeah, Banny. And, uh, and Troy Aikman. 
and pretty much a bunch of other guys. Right. I still think the best part is a, a mutual buddy of ours in that Smitty section. Oh my God. Where he's just washing his hands, kind of singing to the song, and looks up, and Jamie Lynn's walking behind him in a in restroom. The, in the men's restroom. And he, oh, I thought it was the, I thought he was in the women's restroom. No, Jamie was in the. Was uh, in the I had it backwards. And all right, I'm gonna throw a little funny story about that too. Oh no. Because. The whole thing was, is Smitty's like, what if I'm in the bathroom? And, or, and, and I don't know, it might have been Jamie's idea of, hey, and then I just walked by, and then Smitty's like, what, what the, the hell, you know? <laughs> and the funny thing is, is we're like, action. So Smitty's washing his hands. She walks by towards the urinals, and Smitty's like, and Jamie didn't realize there's actually a dude in there pissing. <laughs> hey, she gets in there and she goes, oh, God, you know? <laughs> After they said cut, she comes running out with her head down. She's like, I'm so sorry, dude. <laughs> this guy comes walking out like, what the hell are y'all doing? Oh, it was so funny. Never mind the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, luckily, Jamie didn't have a camera on her at the yeah. time. But we did. We had a fun time shooting that, man. That was, it was fun to watch. Because <laughs> yeah. it was just, you know, that song's been really good to me. You sure. Know? And so we re-recorded it, you know. First one we recorded in Arlington at... Oh my God, Patrick McGuire's place, you know. Oh wow. He's not even in business anymore. I was about to say, yeah. that was... And uh, so we re-recorded it acoustically, mm -hmm. you know, in, uh, at Fort Worth Sound. And then did the video just to celebrate the song and had right. all my buddies come in and sing along yeah. with me. And so yeah, that was cool. Still missing that golf section somewhere in there though. Nah, I know. All right, 204. Great swing. Thanks, Get a buddy. stick. Sit on it right there. Stop. Just missed the green. Oh, that was almost oh. a auto putt birdie there. Just kind of caught that false Just front. Just get it inside 12 feet and you still got a birdie. All right. Yeah, that's probably been the biggest kind of kick in the head with this whole coronavirus thing has been. It's a par four, dude. It's not an automatic birdie. Uh, it was a par, oh, I guess the last one was a par five. Now, hole out. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little coach. closer. That's all it Thanks, is. Thanks, coach. <laughs> It right there. There it is. That's good a good shot. par, isn't it? Yep, should be. Ooh, right at 12 feet. Don't be 12.1. Come on. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so that's how accurate the thing is. is if it's 12.01, it's right. probably a two-putt, unless it's a really easy, and then right. you just move into where the percentages take over. Yeah, yeah, and so it. the percentages from a 12 feet on that are actually pretty good. It's a pretty flat putt. You're already on number five, man. Still just three over, so you only have three shots to give, just to tie them. <laughs> Stop putting pressure on me, man. <laughs> All right. I, I was gonna say, the, the only last part about that video shoot that was entertaining too was, you know, Bowen Fest had wrapped up and it's probably, I don't know, 11.30, 11 o'clock at night. Right. And I look out of the corner of my eye and I just see you with, I forget the guy that was shooting it for you. Right. Um, and Justin John, grabs John. me. Yeah. yeah, and Justin grabs me for Bell. <laughs> and he goes, come on. And by this time, let's just say we had all had a few drinks. <laughs> uh, and we're in that little area behind where you walk through the convention center area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, what, in passing or somehow we saw Cody Canada. No, Cody was going to sing some of it. Oh, is that what yeah, it was? Yeah, he, we were meeting him back there because he was going to do a couple lines out of it. And then Frizzell did them. Yeah, and then Form tackled him. Yeah, him I have to say, him out I'm impressed he didn't fall over or break Cody. <laughs> One of the two. Well, I mean, in Justin's defense, Cody weighs what a buck twenty. That's you wet. <laughs> I think that was the same year too that I was supposed to play on the TXRDR team, and Wade came up to me like halfway through the concert, and he's like, "Hey, I need to talk to you. Stay right there." By the way, you're playing with Cody. So well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, I need you, "You do me a favor." I went, "Oh no." And Cody's golf skill level is when he got. Hey, when he no, it's not just that, but when he got to the golf course that day, he had his golf bag. I'll never forget because we were all drinking Bloody Berries. We're uh -huh. over it. He goes. Yay sports! Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's how you know you're with a guy. You're yeah. Like, oh, oh, and he was in, if I remember correctly, <laughs> his torn jeans. Yes. His like commando style boot things yes. that he always yeah. wears, and a rainbow tank top that was a yes. size too small. So he was either ready to play a, a convention center with thirty thousand people <laughs> or play golf. Because that's Cody right there. That's his attire. I think he saw the uh, the golf cart. Stereos and all that stuff, and we lost it. And I went up to Wade. I'm like, dude, I, he doesn't want to play. I'm like, right. I don't. 
<laughs> By the way, I'm 125 an hour. <laughs> this, if this is a big golf lesson. I don't know, dude. I got driver in my hand right here, and it's only 383. So it's 383. Do I, do I play smart here? If you want to come backwards, it's 215 to about right there on the right. And if you want to try and carry it, it's 285. So your landing zone is right in the middle of those. All right. I'm hitting it. You're going to hit it? I'm what, what do you want your line to be? Just directly between them? Yeah. Actually, go actually go to the left bunker a little bit because it's going right to turn over. One more. Touch more. Boom. There you go. I mean, you watch, I'll hit this bastard straight at the bunker that it will not flip over. Sorry, Mom. It's gonna be good. Right between them. Confidence. Ah, uh, that wasn't bad. No. So you got one, five, four left into it. Misses left. Okay. No wind. Going nine iron. Welcome to how rounds of golf go with all of us. Yeah, no uh, shit. Get a little bounce. Come on. Oh, dude, that's pretty right there. Good shot, Steve-O. Is that gonna be 22 feet? So, I'm, I'm worst case, I'm not 12 bar. foot away, but by God, that wasn't bad. Out of bar. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. We white guide the crap out of that, didn't we? Yeah, it was very <laughs> awkward. My dad, to this day, still doesn't know what a fist bump is. <laughs> and I, one time he could come off the green and he'd do a fist bump. He did that and he just grabs my hand and goes like that. I'm like, I saw you idiot. on TV the other day, do, do the fist bump. And some guy goes, oh, it's a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the hell was that? <laughs> he did, it was like, whatever TV show. And he goes, <laughs> like, oh my God, you dumbass. I feel like that should be the new thing when people do that. Just come up with the most crazy stuff. Yeah. We could do a golf one. Yes, dude. So like, you go up to fist bump, you just go. <laughs> but he said, uh, first hole, we don't hit driver. He said, what do you hit 200 yards? I said, let's hit a five iron. He said, fine, he hands me the five iron. And I get over the ball, you know, and I'm with two Russians and then another guy that was from Scotland. And you know, I've met these guys 10 minutes ago. Right. One of the Russian dudes is about yay tall and just ripped. So I'm expecting him to be some mafia dude. And if I piss him off, he's gonna kill me. Right. You know? So I tee up over the ball and I, oh, lefty, oh, you know, so I hear all that bullshit. You know? <laughs> Which you so normally do. I get over the ball and I hit a perfect shot with about a five yard draw, 200 yards. And uh, one of the other guys caddies, I guess I, they could just tell I was so nervous. How he walked by it, he goes, you can exhale now. You know? <laughs> In oh, that was, thick Scottish accent, you're like, yeah, oh my God, yeah, you can exhale now, you know. <laughs> and I guess I did, hey, then we played golf, you know. Right. And uh, I parked the first hole. Shot a 92 from the tips. Had the same ball that I put it out on 18 that nice. I teed off with. It was just great. It yeah. was an awesome day. Welcome to how tournament golf is, my friend. Oh my that God. first tee box, you've got nerves. Woo. And then as soon as you get that shot over with, you're like, we're good. We're yes. good. Everything's fine. We're not just playing golf. It was a great day, though. That was one of the best birthdays ever. I've got a seven iron here somewhere. <laughs> Start putting them upside down. So yeah. <laughs> All right. That's the one downside about these days like this, you start playing, you just do that, because you're like, I'm gonna need it again in a minute. Yeah. Just do that, and then you spend you half the time looking yeah, for it, going, damn it. 12 clubs out here, and I still can't figure it out. All right. Let's try to get one within 12 feet. Hit it good. Stop it, stop it, uh, stop it. flip over, isn't it? Got a little kick left though. It's running down the car path now. Oop, just fell off the car I path. I think it went into a gutter. <laughs> it's in a drain. A ravine. So any other little hidden gem golf courses you've gotten to play that maybe people don't necessarily know a ton about? Uh, I've played Hard Rock. I've played uh, Hard in, Rock. in the Cancun area. Is it my, oh, okay. My, uh, Where they play the Mayakoba. That's yeah, not the name Mayakoba, of the golf yeah, course, but that's yeah. the area. Yeah, I've played that. I've played several in the it's Cancun cool area. Because we, when we do our Mexico music trip, you yep. know, guitars and swim-up bars. And we just got back from there, by the way. Oh, yeah, it was awesome. a whole, yeah. But I've played a lot of golf down there, too. And uh, But there's several golf courses that I've got to, had some cool shit happen. Right. And, uh, Dave Stockton, Dave Stockton mm -hmm. Jr., they live in Palm Springs. Well, they do a big uh, fundraiser every year for the uh, the elk in the mountains. Yep, I know what you're uh, talking about. Big horn sheep. Yep. That's what I'm trying to say. And they flew me out one year and oh, that's cool. sang at the banquet, got to play golf in the tournament. You can see the 
the big orange sheep up on the mountains. Right. And, playing. and it's awesome, you know, and that, and that was a cool thing to be a part of. President uh, Ford started that, invited Stockton oh. Sr. to do it. And then when President Ford passed away, Stockton stepped up and, and took, took over. over. And, yeah, yeah, that's cool. So it was that was pretty cool. Right, absolutely. Stayed at the uh, Palm Springs Resort, you know. So the you're, original. Yeah, yeah so, you know, so awesome. I'm sitting at the bar having dinner and there's pictures of, you know, Lucille Ball and Bob right. Hope and, you know, it was cool. I yeah. Mean, yeah, I'm just sitting there going, holy shit, this is pretty nice, you know. See, that's the one time, because golf pros as a whole, I mean, touring or club professionals, we get to play some pretty cool places, but musicians, you guys tour around quite a bit. Right. And so if you're into golf, it's actually a great habit, and a lot of musicians do play golf simply because you have this time to kill in the day if you get right. to a venue at a reasonable time and you right. don't have to, you know, hopscotch every day. Yeah, it um, keeps us from going crazy in a hotel room. You right. Know, just, yeah, let's go play golf. Get out yeah. and you can kill, you know, six hours if you do it, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, before playing, have some lunch type of a thing. And but you get to play some pretty cool places because of that and get to see all different types of golf right. courses. And back in the 90s when I was playing with Sonny Burgess, we, uh, there's a place in, in uh, Nashville called the Wild Horse Saloon. Mm -hmm. And it was on the country network for back in the 90s. It was the big line dancing right, show. Right. I mean, it was a big deal back then. And that place was so much of a big deal that they put a wild horse in uh, Florida on Pleasure Island at Disney World. Okay. So we would go to, we would do two weeks there and two weeks in Nashville. But once we got on the property at Disney, we were considered employees. So we played every Disney course we would play 36, awesome. hey, 36 holes a day for two weeks straight. Right. And it was like 10 bucks a round or yep. something. So dude, we played Buena Vista and all these, Lake, Lake yeah. Buena Vista. And, well, how long ago was this? Bad, oh, this was in the 90s. You so know. they were playing the tournament there still then? Yeah. The PGA oh, yeah, yeah. Tour was these, there. These places were immaculate, dude. Yep. So we, yeah, we would play 36 holes every day. There's like nine courses on Disney property. Yep. So we got to play every one of those for two weeks straight. God, it's fun. I mean, there was a jazz club. There was the country bar that we always played at. Yeah. There was a, they called it the beach club. So there was, yeah, they would play gone. like 90s rock, you yeah. know. But every band on that property were just badasses. Yeah. So, you know, when you when you were on break or they were on break, everybody was going to watch each other, you yep. know. And it got to a point we were there so much, we knew all the other bands, you know, because we were there two weeks every six weeks. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, God almighty, we had a blast in Florida. So, dude. last last story about this area in Disney, but uh, there's a new place that you would absolutely love because you and I are a fan of the Irish culture. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, so, they opened this thing called Raglan Road a few yeah. years back. And it is, in, it is a true, they brought an Irish bar from some bar that had shut down over in Dublin. It was actually the bar. And it, they brought it, they had to build more of it because yeah. obviously it's, uh, you know, an Irish bar is about, you know, what, probably 18 feet wide yeah. roughly, but yeah. it's immaculate woodwork. Right. And it's just really, really cool. I mean, you can smell the history off those things, That's the amount so of cool. Irish whiskeys that have been accidentally spilled right. on it. And they had to build it around, but the original bar is actually kind of partitioned off and they made the other rest of the wood a little wider, just not a lot, but enough yeah. to where you could tell where the original stops yeah, and the yeah. add-on. They do Irish folk dancing in between stuff. Oh, they have so cool. Irish bands, there's an outdoor area. It's so cool, authentic Irish food, dude. It's that's it's awesome. one of those, like when we were done, a couple years back, I took our buddy Cody Kelly down there because he was thinking about getting into golf. And I'm like, well, come down with me, just stay in my room. Right. And we found it the first year they had opened it up. Let's just say we spent some money in there. Right. I drinking love, Guinness I, and Jameson. I love and Ireland, dude. That's some place that I haven't played golf. I've been there yeah. three times doing music. Mm -hmm. And one of the trips, I got offered a, a golf trip, and I could have gone. I woke up, and it was like 40 degrees, raining, and the wind was blowing Pass. 30. You know what I mean? It was so like, normal day in Ireland. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm just going to stay here and drink. You know? Yeah, I'll warm up from the inside. <laughs> All right, dude. All right, back to golf. Back to golf. What hole are we on, by the way? We are on hole six. Okay. So you got three and a half holes left. 36 yards to the pin. Not oh, not that thick it. stuff right not there. enough. I didn't realize that. that. That's the one thing that I have a hard time is you can't see the downs and ups like undulation right. quite as easily. Yeah, I kind of screwed myself on that. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Alright, what's the odds of us chipping this in? Very, low. very, very slim low. That. <laughs> that was stupid. So, just out of curiosity, this for my own golf of knowledge and your golf, why didn't you club up to like a gap or sand wedge and hit it a little harder versus that? That's awful, dude. <laughs> Run. 
run, run. I think that's all uphill. Again, it's just hard to judge undulation right. sometimes. All right, 388. So you got 236 so to that aim point right now. That hole, dude. Do what? I'm so disappointed in myself on that hole. Just get a birdie here and make it up. Damn it. I did not want to double that. Stay right there, get down. Dude, I know I'm not, I didn't hook that ball that far. Got a little hole. <laughs> <laughs> so you got 82 to it. You just have to get over that bunker right there in front of you. You got to carry it at least 110. Okay. All right. Or do you want to just pitch out left? Oh no, I'm going through that little <laughs> cut right there, dude. God put those two trees right there just for me. Aiming point? Right where it is. Ooh, stay there. Nice kick. Great shot, Steve-O. Thanks, man. Get up on that green, go. Get up there. Oh. <laughs> another foot dude <laughs> another foot another foot and it's an automatic par yep but now it's going to let me four putt it you can putt this if you want no i'm going to mess up a chip here dude <laughs> i've got a 60 degree i'm going to try to get it close so you only got 13 yards i would fly it most of the way don't expect a whole lot of run okay Sit on it right there. See, they just want to check up a little bit more for some reason. That's, the, that's the weird thing to me about the simulator is the yep. chips. Golly, I feel like I'm hitting it perfect and I'm just flying by. A strong. So earlier you mentioned uh, get screwing me right there. I'm a foot <laughs> off the green and it gives me an auto putt right. for bogey. Should have put it like I said. I know. <laughs> um, so earlier you mentioned guitars and swim-up bars. Which this was its tenth anniversary. Yeah, yeah, ten years. And this year, you guys took what was it like a little over is right around ninety, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was like ninety, 90 people, 90 people here, maybe ninety plus. Which is about is that about the average? Uh, 100, 120. Okay, so know. a little lighter than normal. And, and one year we had one hundred and fifty. But, but it's, you know, with all the crap going on in the world sure. right now, ninety people ready to get out of town and go. I thought that was a great number. Well, know? and that's I was about to say, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's it's a really cool event, and that's kind of what. <clears throat> they specialize in, I almost right. want to say. I mean, obviously you can call them and just do, hey, I want to go to the Caribbean. Okay, bye. And they'll do yeah, it. They're, they're a travel, a travel company, they do anything. Right, yeah. but where they differ from a lot is they'll do these group trips and like, I'm structuring some golf tournaments and stuff for them. Right. We started that back in October and then obviously we were literally starting to put stuff on the books with other professionals and clubs and right. it was starting to take shape really nicely and then literally two weeks after that just right. Like, yeah. okay, bye, that was fun. Yeah, <laughs> so happy I quit my job for this. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it, I know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Guitar Instrument Bars, and you guys took uh, five musicians total? Uh, yes. Including you? Yeah, there was a, on the books was me, Jamie Richards, Bo Phillips, Junior Gordon, mm -hmm. Aaron Copeland, and then Ben mm -hmm. McPherson played yep. fiddle. And Jamie wound up not going. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he had a last minute thing come up, I have no right. clue, but. I was, I was in yeah. Puerto Vallarta with yeah. Randy when he called. Right. And uh, you could just see Randy's face go blank. <laughs> like, well, oh, I mean, dang yeah, it. You know. <laughs> Which obviously, we, we, stuff comes up and we can't. Yeah, it's sometimes. life right. happens. It doesn't mean we have to like it, but it's right. life, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, when I heard the news, I was like, shit, what are you talking about? Right. You know, everybody on that trip loves Jamie Richards. Right. I love Jamie Richards. Yeah, we were hoping he was going. But right. It didn't work out that way. Sure. But we had a great trip. I was about to say. Yeah, we had a great trip. It was awesome. And I think anytime Bo's involved, it's at least going to be semi comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you that anytime. You spend more than a day with Bo Phillips, you should get community service credit for that. <laughs> it's really more of like a program they've set up with to get away. If you come along, you actually get a discount if you book under no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, what you started off with there, yeah, we've took some flack over that. Yeah. People so, have people have these preconceived ideas in their head that I don't know. I'm I'm gonna try not to offend people, but yeah, so good you're it, not though. wearing a mask. You're, you're, why are you trying to kill right. people? 
Nobody's trying to kill anybody. Right. We went to Mexico to get away from some of this bullshit. The hotel was at 30% capacity. Yeah. So the only rooms that were there really were ours. Right. The staff was masked, and most of them had a mask and a shield. So you can so, correct me if I'm wrong on this, because I was in Puerto Vallarta about two or three weeks prior to you guys doing Swim Up Bars, because we had been invited down to start touring. And, and quite frankly, there, these areas, Cancun, Riviera Maya, Cabo del, Cabo del Sol, that area, right. uh, and, and Puerto Vallarta, it's tourism. That is their stream of yes. income. They're and so these out of their way to clean this stuff. Yes. I, non stop. When I showed up to the hotel in Puerto Vallarta, disregard the two screenings at the airport right. and the questionnaires and all that other stuff, yes. but I literally had to sign something and this lady pulls out a little disinfectant, like the big, I call it fogger, I don't know what it right. was called, but um, yeah, this little thing and she's like, sure, hang on one second. And she takes the pen, puts it on this little section that apparently she just sanitized, right. sets it down, goes, and then with some stick thing, goes, right. and then she goes, there you go. Yeah. It's Thank you. Charm free. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a lot of things, and yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised it wrote after the amount of right. liquid that was poured on that thing. But uh, but I actually felt, and this is where I say you can correct me if I'm wrong, I felt like everything, once I got there, was probably taken care of better than anything I had seen in the States. Yes, that's what that's what I'm telling you. Right. I was safer there than yes. I was here. So all the shit I got on social media and all that, oh my God, you're taking people to... I took shit on social Shut media up. for y'all. I'm sitting at my yeah. home office yeah. <laughs> working on stuff yeah. and talking to vendors yeah. and I got tagged on some, yeah. not tagged, but I there's got so sent many, messages. There's so many people out there that are medical professionals. Yeah. You have no clue. I listen to the one that Shut matters, up. my yeah. wife. I got 214 yards, dude. And I don't know if you've noticed, that says seven over. This is bullshit, dude. You gotta hold on out here. God dang it. I'm never going to hear the end of this shit. <laughs> I'm sure some of you were sad. Where are they going there, Steve? -O? Well, I thought it would flip back. over a little bit. It's trying. It's coming. Not the bunker. You had a seven there? I did. Ooh, yeah, I would have a Well, uh, I would, I yeah, now after we watch the video, of course. The best part of it being a golfer, I'm like, oh yeah, man, you gotta do this better next time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh yeah, I wouldn't have done that. That's like, that's like, the joke. How many, how many guitar players does it take to change a light bulb? A hundred. One to do it, and ninety-nine to go. Oh, I could do that. <laughs> All right, I got a sixty degree, thirty-five yards to pin. Not bad. A little spin action on that one. Finally. Thanks, man. Had, had, a little, had a little juice, didn't it? That worked. Turn a little bit. Not bad, not bad. You said 50, let's see how I can go, right? I didn't hit that very well, though. You got underneath it a little bit. 60 degree? How far do you hit a 60? 100 yards. Yeah, probably. I mean, it's 98% power, so if you just swing up full, between the power and it'll, it should want to carry just a hair farther because of altitude. Okay. But I would definitely get it to like make sure to carry it all the way to the pin. Oh, you hey, piece of crap. Oh, back up. Back down. One freaking rock, dude. <laughs> God almighty. All right, put it in the hole, dude. Eleven over, man. Well, ten God. over. Sorry, I'm ten so over, man. That's awful, dude. It's awful. This piece of shit. <laughs> no, not really. Twenty-five thousand dollar piece yeah, of shit. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Just to watch a golf ball. Yeah. <laughs> it does play differently indoors than it does outside. Ah, uh, sucked. It has nothing to do with this thing. 
Well, you walked in and you were like, I'm stiff. And this is not early for us, but it's you know a little less warm up, a little less everything. Uh, there's no excuses, I sucked. Frizzell beat me, I'm gonna say it. <laughs> can we do that on my phone so we can send it to him real quick? Uh, yes, I'll do it. <laughs> is there a weird hat or something I'm supposed to be wearing now? I had fun, dude. That was fun, thank you for doing it. Yeah, man. We have to go on a real golf course soon or a trip, better yet. Yes. Uh, real quick, we just want to say a big thank you to 1611 Aaron and BJ for hosting us as always. Uh, if you are interested in booking any lessons or any golf travel or anything that involves everything that you've been seeing on this, check out maverickperformancegolf.com. Uh, it can lead you right into the schedule there if you want to book a lesson with myself. Uh, and to our apparel sponsor, Surf and Turf Golf, you can check them out um, on all social media and their website, just surfandturfgolf.com. What do you have coming up? Because this will be out in about a week. Uh, you know, honestly, I've been playing a lot of shows. Been playing a lot of private stuff. Been okay. doing a lot of, you know, they close the bars down. Sure. A bunch of us just put it out there. You want us to come to your house? Play your backyard. We'll play your ranch. You yeah, know. There you go. My phone's blown up. You know, That's I've been good. playing a lot of stuff, but it's you know acoustic. We're not doing full band yeah, yeah. stuff. But Steve Helms Band, that's all social media, that's all, anywhere you listen to music, that's what it is. Yep, make sure and give them a follow. Do you have any merch on the website? Uh, I don't. People don't want my shit. Okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, you can find all of that. Perfect. I'll pay you to take it. And maybe you can come along on his little Instagram stories if you know how to work that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. some golf rounds. We can yes. watch you curse some more. I'm good at it. <laughs> I can't chip, but I can cuss at it. Right, all right. Thank you guys so much.